to part three on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. In this part, we're going to end it off and solve the entire piece, um, including this last layer and then this last like side. So, so what we want to do is we want to get two of our pieces, any two, it doesn't matter, uh, on the same side. Now, I will address what happens if you get them on the corner, but we just want to find two pieces that are on the same side. Uh, you won't have to move anything. You won't have to do any algorithms. You just have to rotate the top until you find it. It will always be there, whether it be diagonal or on the same side. So on this cube, I'm going to look for the pieces that are the same. So this is yellow, blue, and orange. If I pair that up to the yellow, blue, and orange, this piece and this piece are in the right spot. So uh, what I mean by that is now these two pieces are in the right spot. Um, they're not oriented right, but we can worry about that later. Right now, we just want to make sure they're in the right spot. So we can A, get this scenario, and what we do for this scenario is hold the pieces that are, you know, on the right spot next to our left hand. So like this, and then we do our right hand algorithm three times. Three. And then we rotate the cube to the left and then do our left hand algorithm three times. And now you will notice that nothing got altered in the top on the sides. But what did get altered was that the two pieces that were on your right hand side switched sides. So now if you look, all pieces will be in the right spot regardless of how they were before. So this is yellow, orange, and green. If I put that up to the right spot, this is in the right spot, this is in the right spot, and this is in the right spot. So I'll do that again now on this cube, and we will look for two pieces that are in the right spot. So uh, this is yellow, blue, and orange. Let me just pair that up. Uh, this is in the right spot. This is in it. Uh, hmm. This isn't... Okay, I don't see it. Uh, so now we'll just rotate it so until I find it. So now this is in the right spot. This is not in the right spot. Not in the right spot. This is also not in the right spot. So it's not this. Uh, is there any piece in the right spot right now? Nope, so it can't be this. All right, this piece is not. This piece is in the right spot. Wrong. Wrong spot, and this is the only piece in the right spot, okay? Again, rotate it. This piece is in the right spot, and this piece is in the right spot, okay? So, I have found the two pieces that are in the right spot. See, that is um, the most time-consuming and, in a way, not even confusing, just time-consuming, and just make sure you don't want to make a mistake on this. Now, I found it. I hold it to my left hand, and I do my right hand algorithm three times. One two, three, rotate the entire cube to the left, and then do my right, left hand algorithm three times. And this is three. And now none of these sides have changed, but now all of the pieces are in the right spot. So if I make sure they're all lined up, yep, they're in the right spot, right spot, perfect and perfect. So that's that. Now, there is one case scenario where you can get two pieces that are diagonal. And I'll show you that now. All right, so now I have two pieces that are diagonal from each other, each other but they're still in the right spot. So, um, you won't know this just by looking at it. You're going to have to obviously search for it. And so I'm good, going to do that with you right now. This piece is not in the right spot. Neither is this. Neither is this piece. And neither is this piece. So it can't be here. Not in the right spot. This is in the right spot, this is not in the right spot, and this is in the right spot. So now as you can see, these two pieces are in the right spot, but they're actually um, flipped. They're diagonal from each other. So what we do is the same algorithm, but this time it doesn't matter which side you're holding on your left-hand side. As long as one of the right, um, uh, right solved pieces, there are pieces that are in the right spot are on your left-hand side, you're okay. And that will happen every time, regardless of where you do it. So I'm just going to do it on this side. Here's the piece that's in the right spot, and here's the piece that's in the right spot. Now I'm just going to do that same algorithm, the right-hand algorithm, three times. 
rotate the entire cube to the left, do the left hand algorithm three times, and then I have the two pieces that are now in the right spot. Okay, that, I hope that makes sense. What I'm trying to say now is that the two pieces will now be on the same side. So if I look, and this piece is in the right spot, this is not in the right spot, so this is not in the right spot, and neither is this. Okay, so this piece is now in the right spot, and so is this. But, if you notice, these pieces are still not in the right spot. And um, I previously told you guys what to do if they're not in the right spot, like this. So you have two pieces that are in the right spot, and they're on the same side, and two pieces that are not on the same... And two pieces that are not on the right spot, and they're on the same side. So what you would do is hold the pieces that are in the right spot on your left hand, do your right hand algorithm three times, one, two, three, rotate the entire cube to the left, and then do your left hand algorithm three times. And now all of your pieces are in the right spot. Wow. Now it's pretty simple. What we're going to do now is we're going to just insert all of these pieces using our right hand algorithm in. So I'm just going to choose a random piece that isn't, um, isn't inserted. So none of these pieces are inserted. But if you have like say one piece inserted already, it doesn't matter. Just don't choose that spot as um, your starting point. So this piece is not in the you know inserted properly. So I'm just going to choose this and I'm going to insert the yellow. I'm going to just keep doing my right hand algorithm till the yellow is facing the bottom. So however much that's like. So that is one, two three and now it's inserted now don't lose your spot hold the cube like this so you know exactly where you were and because if you notice the cube is messed up now but we're going to solve that now by um rotating the bottom not the entire cube you rotate the cube it's going to mess up and you're going to have to restart the entire thing make sure you only rotate the yellow side i messed up About to tell you guys something very important. Now we're going to insert all of these top pieces. You're using our right hand algorithm. So um, if you have one or two pieces that are still already in there. Just don't choose that as your starting point. Just choose any unsolved piece. So I'm just going to randomly choose this. Now what you want to do is you want to flip the cube upside down. This is the only time that the white side should be facing upwards. Every other time the white should be on the bottom. But when we reach this specific point, that is the only time you guys can flip the cube and have the white on top. Now we're going to do our right hand algorithm as many times as it takes until this yellow is facing on the bottom. And as I previously said, uh, all these pieces must be in the right spot. If they're not, then you will end up with a messed up cube. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to do my right hand algorithm as many times as it takes to get the yellow piece in the right spot. And don't worry if the cube gets messed up like this. Uh, that is why you don't want to uh, mess lose your point. If you lose your point and then you start with something you know wrong and you don't start in the right spot, you're going to have to restart the entire cube. It's going to look like this, and you don't want that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to only rotate the uh, bottom yellow side and make sh and get our next unsolved piece in there. So. I just rotated it, doesn't matter which way you rotate it, but now I have my next unsolved piece and I will do my right hand algorithm as many times as it takes until that piece is inserted. Now notice that I've only inserted to these two pieces and the entire cube has gotten right back to where it was. Does not matter, uh, don't get excited because you haven't really done anything yet um, and now you just got to keep doing what you have been doing. So I'm going to rotate the yellow piece again, yellow side again, and I'm going to do my right hand algorithm as many times as it takes until the yellow is on the bottom. And then I'm going to rotate the yellow face again, and then do the same exact thing. Now, once you have successfully inserted all of these pieces, all of these yellow pieces in the right spot, now you can give yourself a nice pat on the back. Because now what we're left with is this. So only some of the pieces are not in the right spot. You can also end up with something that looks like this. Where there's no side solved. 
So here I have one side that is completely solved, and the three others are, um, you know, solved except for one piece, so they just need to rotate. Or you can end up something like this, where none of the sides are solved, and there's just one missing piece in all of them. So I'm going to start off with this one because it's the easiest, and it leads into this. That's what I'm trying to say. If you end up with this, you're going to have to do the same algorithm to get here, and then you're going to, and then you're going to do that algorithm again to get to here. All right. So say you end up, you just solve the cube, and you're right here. Now you will do your right-hand algorithm once. does not matter where it is because, remember, there's no side solved. So if there's no side solved, you can just start from any spot as long as yellow is on the top and white is on the bottom. That is a must now. Again, like I said previously, this is the only time that, that was the only time that white could be on the top. White always has to be on the bottom. White is on the bottom, yellow is on the top. Just make sure that is right. And then you can start with any of these sides, whether it be red, green, blue, or orange. I'm just going to choose green, random, again, and I'm going to do my right-hand algorithm once. Then I'm going to do my left-hand algorithm once. Now this is what the cube should look like. Now I'm going to do my right-hand algorithm five times, a total of five times. So, one, two, three, four, and five. Now I stop. Now I have to do my left-hand algorithm five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Now notice that there is one side solved. So now we're in the right we're in the same spot. Now it does not matter if now if you notice we, we have the same side done, both our red side are done, but they have different colors. It does not matter, it's still the same thing. One is luckier than the other, and I'll tell you which one that is. This one, this one is a bit luckier than this one, but you can eventually figure out how to, um, you know, make them both equally as lucky. That's intuitiveness. Don't worry about it. So let's just say now this is how your cube looking like. Okay, uh, you have one side solved, and the others have like one piece missing. Now you will do the same thing you just did to get that one side solved, which is your right hand algorithm once. Then your left hand algorithm once, then your right hand algorithm five times. One, two, three, four, five. Then your left hand algorithm five times. Three, four, and five. And now you have a solved cube. Now, sometimes what would happen when you do this is um, you when you're facing when when the solved side is facing towards you and then you do it make sure that the solved side is facing towards you when you um you know start this algorithm because this is a time where you can't just choose any random spot and do it the solved side has to be facing towards you now sometimes what will happen when you do the same exact step right up right hand algorithm left hand algorithm right hand algorithm five times Five, and then left hand algorithm five times, four, and now five. You'll still end up with an unsolved cube. Now, the reason you still ended up with an unsolved cube is because it's one of the unluckier sort of scenarios. So you just have to do that same thing again, which um, the solved side is facing towards you. And then you do your right-hand algorithm once, left-hand algorithm once, right-hand algorithm five times. And eventually you'll get really fast at this. And left-hand algorithm five times. And now you will end up with a solved cube. So there you guys have it. How to solve a Rubik's Cube. Wasn't that tough. I just made it that tough. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more episodes like this or videos like this, uh, leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Peace.